Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We'd like to take this opportunity to introduce you to the newest member of the Sandblast family, Sandblast Agent for Browsers. Sandblast Agent for Browsers is an exciting new technology um, that incorporates some new features and capabilities, one of which is called zero phishing. And what zero phishing does is it helps protect organizations from unknown threats that are coming in over email. And so today we're going to talk quite a bit about that. And let's go ahead and get started. So I'm Jen Toscano. I'm one of the product marketing managers for threat prevention. And today I'm joined by Yanni Schlemmerdeen, who is the threat prevention product manager. Checkpoint talks a lot about the idea of staying one step ahead. But what we're really trying to do is trying to enable you to manage your business at the speed you need and to be able to do that with confidence. And in order to do that in today's business environment, employees need unconstrained access to the internet, whether they're um, trying to reach out and safely use applications externally or doing research and browsing, downloading and sharing documents across the internet. Um, they need this access to the web. But they need to be able to do that at the speed that their business requires, and we need to stay out of the user's way. But how do we do that in a secure manner? We have to be able to apply the most advanced protection techniques so that our users can read their emails, work on the web, and browse on third-party sites. And this all has to work safely, but the big challenge is to do that without impacting their pace, without introducing delays into their workday. And really, to optimize business and innovation, organizations need to provide that unconstrained access to users, and they need to provide immediate delivery of any downloaded content. But at the same time, they have to balance that with the, you know, with the challenges that we face in the threat landscape. Uh, we're seeing more malware hidden in web downloaded content. We're seeing phishing based on more sophisticated social engineering attacks. And even we're seeing the use, the reuse of corporate passwords on third-party sites. Those types of actions can put organizations at risk. The first step, though, in understanding how to stop these types of attacks is to understand how attackers are actually getting in. If we understand that, then we can actually talk about how to stop it. We recently conducted a survey, uh, well, actually, SANS Institute recently conducted a survey that we sponsored. And the results have actually been introduced at Black Hat and last week on a webcast. If you're interested in learning more about the survey results, um, we'll be doing another webcast with SANS next month on September 7th. You can actually register for it on our public website. Um, but anyway, um, one of the key takeaways from this survey was that they took an in-depth look at the threat landscape, and they asked people, if you look at the most significant threats that impacted your organization over the last month, or 12 months, excuse me, how did they get in? And what we found out was 46% said that impactful events entered the organization through an email message where they clicked a link that opened their browser and boom, you know, their employee got infected with malware. Um, this was actually more people than they saw opening attachments and messages because over the years people have been trained to not open attachments in emails from people that they don't know. Um, but people still are not hesitant to click on links and that has presented more challenges over the last several years. The second thing that they identified was that people were just out there browsing on the internet. They go to a watering hole or a place where they had content or saw content that looked interesting to them or would help them do their job more efficiently. They click and download it, and without knowing it, they've downloaded malware into their system. And in, in that case, SANS saw that 41% of organizations saw this type of attack. The browser is definitely a risk to people as they do the work. But realistically speaking, we can't prohibit employees 
from accessing and browsing the internet to, to do their work because they, they really, in a lot of cases, need the tools and the information available on the internet to execute their work successfully. But how can we help them do it safely? That's one of the big questions we seek to answer. The other thing that SANS found in their survey is that 80% of organizations experience a phishing incident, at least one phishing incident, in the last 12 months. Now, we all get phishing emails and delete them all the time, and our spam filters do a good job of catching a lot of the uh, phishing. But some phishing, phishing messages still get through. Some are well disguised and look legitimate and get past spam filters. And then if you click on them, that creates a, a challenge for the organization. And in fact, four out of five organizations say it's resulted in an incident. And in 38% of attacks, the attackers are actually bypassing endpoints using social engineering. Um, whether that's spoofing an email address, making the email look like it came from someone the user knows, or if they did research into the company to leverage some sort of business condition, like they know you're merging with another company, or they know you're making a significant inventory purchase, they might use sophisticated social engineering schemes to get you to open the message and the attachment or click the link in order to get through. Um, and even a great number of these attacks use no malware at all. Um, think, think like the classic Bank of America or, or Chase, uh, the classic banking uh, phishing scams. They simply send you an address that looks legitimate. Uh, when you click it, it looks like a legitimate site. And um, they send you an email that says that there's been some fraudulent activity in your account that you need to log on immediately and change your password in order to protect your information. And what you're really doing is logging into their site, which is a facade of the Bank of America or Chase site, and providing your um, user credentials to the attacker. And that attacker now has the ability to go onto the banking websites and steal your money, essentially. Um, these attacks don't need malware. They just need you to type in your username and password. So they're really taking advantage of, of the user's trust in order to be effective. So how do we protect against these things? You know, the survey was conducted over the last two and a half months. So this is very real and very current in terms of what's impacting organizations today. Many of you have probably been hit by ransomware as a result of a phishing attack or maybe you had employees whose credentials were stolen, or even possible, some of you may have been hit by a whaling attack where someone pretended to be one of your executives and asked someone in finance to send them a check or forward a check to another account when in fact it was just fraudulent activity. We need to stay in front of these. And the problem is that today's approaches are quite often one step behind. Uh, one approach that organizations use is to install multiple endpoint solutions. For example, if I already have antivirus, now I want to add anti-malware to protect against unknown threats. Or, and then on top of that, I might install some sort of anti-phishing to check reputation databases. More and more things I'm putting on my endpoints, this makes them much more difficult to deploy from the IT perspective, and it's a challenge to users as these tools start slowing down end user systems, and the tools have more and more impact on their performance and usability, especially when an organization implements endpoints from multiple vendors or solutions from multiple vendors, that leaves the end user with multiple actions that they might have to take if they're given a different, if they're given a condition in which there was a problem found. Um, so this, this makes it very difficult for both IT and for the end user itself. Another solution that organizations are implementing is sandboxing. And sandboxing absolutely works for unknown malware and every organization should implement um, an advanced sandboxing solution. But here's the challenge is sandboxing takes two to three minutes at best case 
to do its emulation. In other words, it takes two to three minutes to, to analyze the file and determine whether or not it's a good file or if it's malicious. The challenge with that when we're doing an internet search is no employee is going to wait or can they afford to wait two to three minutes or in the case of slower threat emulation, or excuse me, slower sandboxing, five minutes, 10 minutes, or even an hour for a document that they're downloading from the internet. The whole point of the internet is quick, easy access to information. Sandboxing is too slow for web browsing. And of course, another challenge that faces organizations is that phishing attacks are constantly evolving. As organizations figure out how to stop one phishing attack, the creators are then modifying those attacks so that they can avoid detection by traditional mechanisms. What have we done to counter this? Well, Checkpoint is proud to introduce Sandblast Agent for Browsers. Um, this is the newest member of the Sandblast family of solutions, and what it is, is it's a lightweight installation with a minimal footprint on your system, and it's installed as a simple web, pl web plugin, excuse me. Um, but what it does is it has all the same capabilities of Sandblast Zero Day Protection. And that includes both threat emulation and advanced sandboxing and threat extraction. So what we're able to do is secure every click, whether that's a click in your browser, landing on a Word document, we'll convert that document to a safe format. If it's a website we've never seen before, we can evaluate it against phishing databases and actually look at the page and evaluate it in real time to determine any phishing risks. Um, we can actually provide two real significant elements. The first element is real-time prevention. The real-time prevention protects users from malicious web downloads by running threat extraction to provide safe versions of potentially malicious content. So when a file comes in, we analyze it, or we, we create a safe version and deliver that version immediately to you. And at the same time, in parallel, we can then run threat emulation to analyze it with an advanced sandbox and CPU level detection. We protect in real time from phishing sites by dynamically analyzing the site. And yes, we do look at reputation databases, but we also look at a lot of things, a lot of other things too. And Yanni's going to actually get into a lot of detail about that. But we'll also look at the site in real time and run advanced protection against it. The other key element is doing all of this in a minimal footprint. Nobody wants another endpoint technology on their machine. Every time you bring in a new technology, people have to evaluate the trade-off. Is it worth rolling out to all my machines and updating my gold image to be able to include a technology, a new technology? Um, by deploying this as a browser extension, it requires no action on the part of the users that we can do it within their browser environment and maintain a consistent user experience that's transparent. And that really enables organizations to deploy this easily and effectively across, the, or across their entire company. So I'll go ahead and hand it off to Yami at this time to go into some of the more detailed elements of the solution. Hi everyone, thanks Jen. Um, <clears throat> like uh, we've been saying, Sandbox Agent for Browsers is our newest member of the Sandbox technology family. Now, the thing that connects all of the different Sandbox solutions is the same core technologies and the same concept of delivering advanced zero-day protection with as minimal a footprint as possible. Now, with the Sandbox Agent for Browsers, we really believe that we've achieved that on all fronts. The protections that we provide within the Agent for Browsers are essentially divided into two main families. The first is looking at web downloads. Now, as Jen mentioned, each and every web download that's initiated when you have this education for browsers is immediately sent to the standard inspection service in the cloud. 
while the, sorry, while the analysis is going on, we'll deliver a sanitized, clean version of that document or picture or PDF file, whatever it may be, and deliver that immediately. So with that, we've essentially solved the problem of the delay that happens when you use an advanced sandbox. Now, the analysis is going on in the background, but the user can access the file immediately. If the user, for whatever reason, does want to access the original, once the analysis is finished and the file has been deemed clean, it's a matter of two clicks. All you have to do is click on the browser notification, and it's just one other click to get the original file. So it's a very, very easy to use, very simple process. You don't need any teaching. Now, the idea is that we've delivered, essentially, the highest level of advanced zero-day protection is proven. We have the, the test to prove it. We're delivering this with a tiny, almost unvisible browser extension. Now, that solves essentially all you need from a web download perspective. Now, there are additional elements such as flash exploits and things more similar to that, which we're looking at as a, as a roadmap element, and we're looking to add those towards the end of the year. So we finished with the download section. Now we'll move over to zero phishing, our new phishing technology. Now, the world of anti-phishing is essentially going through the same process that antivirus went. Attackers have realized that people have reputation and signature-based solutions. And this means that they're developing ways to beat these signature-based solutions. They're creating brand new phishing sites, brand new attacks that have never been seen. They're creating dedicated, better fake sites, sites that look more like the site they're trying to be. So on the whole, this entire vector of attack has significantly improved over the past 24 months. Now, just like antivirus was essentially replaced by sandboxing, this, we believe that we've done this with zero phishing. We've brought the same mindset of finding a way to target zero-day attacks or unknown attacks by creating zero phishing. Now, it's something that, unlike sandboxing, this is quite unique on the market, and there's no one else that's really addressing this type of problem at the moment. So if we look at the scenario here, what we're seeing is an employee has received an email that looks like it's from Office 365. It's been well-crafted, it looks real, and it's from a brand new email address that's never been seen before. So it's got past anything you could get, essentially, because there aren't any downloads here. There's nothing seemingly malicious. The user sees that and decides to press the link. Fair enough. The user has now been navigated to a site that looks just like Office 365, and he's clicked on the input field. As soon as the input field to log in is accessed, we'll initiate the analysis with, that takes around one to two seconds. And with that analysis, we're able to look not just at the reputation of the site like other solutions, but at all of the characteristics, all of the parameters that are relevant that can be identified as being potentially malicious. So what we're doing here is we're enabling the user to essentially receive zero-day protection for his phishing site. There's no other solution that's going to be able to address these things that are just behavioral. They're the parameters of the site, meaning that that's what makes the site malicious and it's real time, and it takes between one to two seconds. Now, we are looking at signature-based things as well. We haven't forsaken that completely, but this is a completely unique system. Again, we can see here it's a few examples of about 40 to 50 different parameters that we're looking at. We look at the IP, the URL, whether the site is visually similar to, to other sites they could be trying to copy. We're looking at the domain, its reputation, different icons use the title, and many, many other different characteristics that allow us to determine whether it's malicious or not. Now, this has been tested. We've seen this com being compared to other more familiar phishing solutions, Proofpoint, just, uh, and McAfee, just to name a few, and we're beating them. We're getting better scores, especially in things that haven't been seen before. 
Now, again, this is a verb because it's part of the browser extension. The process of understanding that you've just navigated a phishing site is very, very simple. We, look, we only look at the moment at sites with input fields because we're looking to stop credential theft. We're looking to stop sites that are trying to steal your credentials. Now, each and every site that has an input field will be analyzed. So, for instance, if you go to twitter.com and log in, we'll analyze that site, but we'll do it only once. So you won't have to go through the same, even though it's just about a two-second delay, you won't have to go through that each and every time you access a site with credential fields. Now, the second part of zero phishing is even more unique, and it's, it's a slightly unheard of concept on the market at the moment, but we feel it provides lots of value. Now, corporate credentials are essentially the key to your network. Now, with people using multiple services, whether it's for fun or for work, they have Twitter, Tumblr, Salesforce, LinkedIn, etc. they have so many passwords to remember that they tend to use the same password for each and every service. Now, this places them at a huge risk because these services are nowhere near safe. Just over the past six months, we've seen huge leaks from Tumblr, from LinkedIn, and from Twitter, meaning that once they've been leaked, Attackers can access these credentials and with a bit of reconnaissance, find out who they work for and try to use them to access the network. So without anything ever being happened actually on the employee's network itself, suddenly attackers can get access. Now, there aren't any solutions on the market that are even looking at this. There are all sorts of training things that try to convince employees not to use their passwords elsewhere but you can never actually know whether an employee has listened or not. What we do with the credential element of zero phishing is we allow the administrator to define a protected domain. In my case, it would be checkpoint.com. The first time I log into checkpoint.com, once the agent for browsers has been installed, the extension will save a hash of my password and store it locally on the browser. From that point onwards, every time I access an external site, for instance, Twitter, and start typing in my credentials, the credentials will be compared to that hash. And as soon as I type in a password that's identical to my corporate password, I'll be alerted to the fact that I'm about to potentially place my organization in danger. Now, we realize that this, is too, this issue is too common to actually block people. But what we are doing is allowing them to navigate to the site, but we're creating a log of this. So we're giving the administrator both the option to monitor the fact that people are using their credentials elsewhere and creating accountability. Because now people will, be, will know that the administrator knows that they've been using their credentials outside. And at the end of the day, the administrator can, based on their policy, send them an email saying, I know you've been using your credentials elsewhere, change your password now. Now, these three elements of security provide, at the moment, the most complete web protection solution on the market. Now, by doing that, and with giving the, this entire experience with a very minimal footprint, very simple deployment, and making the experience as fluid as possible, both for the administrator and the user, we think we've created a very attractive package here. Now, because all of the analysis is happening on the cloud, none of this is going to slow your endpoint down at all. The intuitive interface preserves the experience like I've been mentioning, and there's no change to the speed of your use. So from a logistic perspective, you have essentially all of the benefits with none of the negatives. So to sum it up, we're, just like I've been saying, we're combining real-time prevention. We're taking the highest level of catch rate that's available on the market today and bringing it to your web browser while retaining a minimal footprint. That's pretty much it for the moment. Um, I will add a few more things. Um, the Sandbox Agent for Browsers is an independent solution that's managed in the cloud and monitored in the cloud. It is worth noting that the Agent for Browsers is also an integral part of the wider Sandblast agent. 
So if you do have the Sandbox agent, the browser extension is part of that agent. You can have it either as part of the bigger agent or as a completely independent solution. At the moment, we support Internet Explorer and Chrome. We're both are in early availability. We're looking to add Firefox towards the end of the year, perhaps at the beginning of next year. It's completely OS agnostic, so regardless of your operating system, whether you're using Windows, OS X, or Linux, all of them are supported by the browser extension, because at the end of the day, it is a browser extension. And I think those cover the main things. Oh, one other thing that's um, very relevant to know, this solution is going to be sold at, on a um, fixed price, $15 per seat if you're looking for the completely independent solution. That's and the licensing is going to be per user. Uh, that's pretty much it for me. All right, thank you, Yanni, and thank you, Jen. I think if, Yanni, if you could just scroll to the next slide, we have um, information on the EA program. So at this point, we'll open it up for questions. Um, I think you answered quite a few of them as to which browsers right now are supported. Um, there was one particular question about uh, Windows 10 Edge, if, uh, if that's on the roadmap and approximately when that would be supported. At the moment, Edge doesn't have a browser, a, a browser extension framework. As soon as they release that, then we'll be looking to add support for that too. Great. And then when is this product expected to GA? Um, towards the end of Q3. Okay, awesome. Um, there's another question that comes in. Is Sandbox Agent Chrome extension available for production environment, which I think you just answered is in Q3. Um, and then there was another question that came in. How is, how is the agent deployed? Uh, via GPO. Great. How does the Sandbox security appliance tie in? Does this allow faster scan times for the client? Um, at the moment, with th this presentation is about the independent cloud-based solution. Um, if you're looking to connect the extension to your on-premise environment, that's something that we can look at and on an ad hoc basis, but that isn't the focus at the moment. All right, thank you. So um, I'm trying to look for some questions that haven't been answered yet. Um, but there's one that comes in about the advantages of joining the early access program. Um, they're asking what are the advantages of it. Um, it's just a matter of the, the, the earlier you join, the more impact you'll be able to have on the actual, on the way the solution looks like when it's finished. And like I've been saying, uh, even though we are in only in early availability stage at the moment, it works very, very well. All right. I think that covers all the questions that we have. And if someone is interested in joining the early access program, uh, the email is put up on the slide, cp underscore ea at checkpoint.com. So thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, thank you, Yanni and Jen, for taking us through the overview of Samus Agent for Browsers.